So as I said, so we're going to, uh, yeah, going to think get started. I think everybody's here. Hi, Jan. So wonderful. It's good to see everybody. So okay. So bring the camera down now. So pretty much, I'm just going to have sort of everything into to camera, so you'll be able to sort of see everything. So you know, this is the um, as I said, sugar one. This is day, this is obviously air drying clay one. I did this in more of a slightly more apricot color. This one is like the Abraham Derby peach colored one. All right. Um, obviously, a big difference in weight. You know, we dealt with that in the first obviously episodes. So There's quite a big difference. You also notice that the the air drying clay one is just a little bit smaller. If I put the leaves side by side, just because we have about an eight to ten percent shrinkage with hardy clay. So that's, you know, you will find that will be a little tiny bit sort of smaller, all right, just because of that shrinkage and things, okay? But um, so anyway, we're going to, to get started. And, um, and as I said, remember, if there's sort of anything you don't have, you know, obviously you can go along at your own speed. I will do this basically in actual time so that you'll be able to, to make the components, all right? Um, so anyway, so we're going to, so remember we have the, you know, if, if you haven't downloaded this, which I hope you all have, you know, obviously when we do the classes, this is what you need to have ready. And obviously you usually just go through and click it, uh, tick it, you know, as you pull the things. I also realize there might be some things I'm using in here that you don't have, and that's where you can just be adapted um, to whatever you have, all right? And as I said, we'll, uh, we'll get through this. And, uh, but as I said, you know, this is obviously a little bit of an unusual circumstance. You know, hopefully in, you know, the next time we're together, you know, things will be a little easier for getting products and things like that. Because, you know, we're the same. We're waiting for, um, you know, products to come in from manufacturers and things like that um, because a lot of those are closed. Now, so David Austin Rose, uh, we're going to um, start off by making the center of the rose, all right? And this is going to be the center part of the rose, all right? So this is going to be the, looks a bit like a jasmine flower, okay? And um, this is what we're going to make. And then the actual petals, this is really your anchoring system. So all of the petals are built onto this, this uh, here. Now, I'm doing this in white paste, uh, white tape, mainly because when you're working with pastel colors, um, if you were making this rose in a dark burgundy or red or colors like that, you could get away with doing this in green, all right? Now, on your supply list, it says, so we're going to take five half-length 24-gauge wires, all right? And um, what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, five floral tape buds, all right? So we're going to make five floral tape buds here. And uh, the floral tape buds are uh, going to be made just like we would make a normal floral tape bud. Um, and that is we're going to take your white floral tape, and now remember, you need to stretch your tape a little bit, all right? Some of you might be a little tape challenged, all right? But you need to remember, stretch, stretch your tape, all right? And then it will become sticky. And we're going to go around three times each times three. So remember, that is you're going to go around three times, bend into a hook, then wrap another three times, continue down the wire a short distance, and break off the tape, all right? So basically what you're going to do here is you're going to take your tape. Now the easiest thing to do is if you're having trouble with your tape is if you just hold the tape, I'm right handed so I've got it between my thumb and first finger, you're just going to go around like once and that will get you started, all right? And then you're going to go one, two, three. Now this is not such a strong wire so generally I just bend that with my fingers to make a hook on the end of this, all right? But if you want to use pliers, obviously if you also have longish nails, you don't want to break your nails, all right? Because um, obviously, again, um, so, but you can use your fingers or the pliers. And then you're going to go one, two, three, all right? And you're going to just tape down just a little tiny bit, all right? And just break off the tape, okay? And so you're just going to show you that again. So you're going to go, so one, two, three, okay? Remember, keep tension on your tape. But if you're using your pliers, you can just go over and just hook that so you want to hook it as basically as tight as you can, all right? Maybe come in a little tiny bit. Let's go. Okay. Just a little bit. There we go. All right. And then one, two, three. And then just come down just a short way and just break that off. Okay. So just going to go around. So one, two, three. Hook. And then one, two, three. One, two, three. All right and then gonna just break off like that. So if you wanna go ahead and make the five of those, all right, so go ahead and make the five of those, and uh, then we'll be ready for the next step. Put those in. Okay, well, there we go. 
So there are different ways to make this style of rose. Some, um, if you've watched any tutorials, some people, you know, some David Austin roses have just this really like almost a carnation in the middle. So some people, what they do is they use like a half of a styrofoam ball and then they put this almost like ruffled petals on the top of it and then build the petals on the, so it's more of a cup shape. But, uh, you know, so there are different ways. The Abraham Derby variety is a little bit more formal in meaning that you have this sort of group of five petals, but there are also some um, Abraham, uh, some of the David Austin roses, like Ondina Rose, you know, I've used a color called Ondina Rose, which is a mauve color. Ondina Rose is actually a four-petaled David Austin style rose. So it's, you can do the same as we're doing, but you actually use four wires. And generally when I do that particular variety, I use individual petals, like a, like a plastic or a metal rose petal set. All right. So that will be your, your wires there. Okay. Just giving you a couple more minutes just to get that done and then we're going to go on to the next step. Sylvia, you're watching Sylvia, it's you're watching it on your YouTube, okay? So remember we're on YouTube. So just, just watch it on YouTube because this is a live event, okay? So this is a, this is a live virtual class. All right, so, um, so if you want to just watch this next step and then you can just finish up if you haven't finished all your floral tape buds, all right? I'll just show you the wiring of that. So what we're going to do now is you're going to take your pair of pliers, all right? And basically what we're going to do is right at the bottom of the underneath, the, like it almost looks a bit like a cotton bud or a Q-tip, you're just going to bend it at a slight angle. All right, so literally you're just going to take your wires, your pliers, just bend it at a slight angle. So it's almost a little bit like a golf, if you think of playing putting, okay? So this will be the third. This is going to be the fourth, okay? This will be the fifth, okay? Okay, and then once you get those together, it then says once five are complete, bend at a slight angle using pliers, bring together, creating a flower shape. So what you're now going to do is you're going to take these and you're going to do the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one. So they're actually going to form almost like a little bit like a, uh, like a, as I said, like a jasmine flower. So you can use your fingers for that, all right? And then you're going to take a 20 gauge wire, all right? Now in your book here, it says in your instructions, white or green, you know, in your, obviously I told you to have four half length green wires, so we're using green today but just gonna add your green wire. Just place that up against the, the bottom here. And then with your green floral tape, just gonna stretch that slightly. Again, just hold this between your thumb and first finger. Just go around once, and then you're gonna just start taping down the wire. Just making sure that you tape down, and just gonna tape down, keeping tension on your tape, okay? So just gonna just keep tension onto your tape here. Now just remember with your floral tape, you wanna, you know, when you're not using the tape, so like at the end of this evening, just keep that in a, uh, keep that in a bag, okay? All right, and you're gonna open this up here. Just gonna push that one down just a little bit so they wanna be level. And then what we're gonna do is gonna use your pliers. Now with your pliers, we're actually gonna squash it this way. So you're gonna get, so they will become like fins, you see? So you're actually taking your pliers and you're actually going to squash them with your pliers like this. So you see how you're going to get this almost like a fin. You see, so it's going to become thinner. Because when we build the petals up, we're going to be building up from the, there we go. And so you're just going to just squash those with your pliers. So you're going to make these little fins on there. All right, but it looks a bit like a little jasmine flower. Okay, so if you want to get to that stage, this in camera, there we go. But if anybody's, you know, if you're having any, um, as I said, when you're, while you're watching, if you, you know, have any questions or, you know, just obviously something else I need to explain or whatever, just, just come back. Now obviously everybody works at different speeds, so don't get too stressed about it, because as I said, if you get a little bit behind, you can sort of catch 
up um, as well. So just like watching a video, you know, you sort of, uh, but uh, as I said, you'll be able to go back, back with this and obviously re redo this. Hi, Jacqueline. Jacqueline lives here in Atlanta. She's, we have a couple of our members, actually. Christina and Jacqueline are live here in Atlanta, so they're the closest. So they're very lucky they can just pop here and get things they need and stuff. But um, what don't you see on the instruction sheet? OK. So, it's, it's, um, so it says here, so you're going to add a 20 gauge wire a half width taping down, we're using half width light green floral tape. Then pinch each bud with pliers to flatten like a fin. Okay. No, I used a half width tape. Okay. So just remember, you know, going forward, I know this is a little bit of a learning curve, but you know, in your um, in the download, in this is the download of what we need. All right, it will tell you like it has on there uh, the wires and half width white and light green tape. All right. And uh, as I did mention here, if you were doing a darker green um, rose, you could use also moss or a dark green as well. So there are, uh, as I said, the, the, those uh, greens can be used, all right? So how, how's, everybody, how's everybody doing? Weather's nice here. It's, uh, it's been very warm. Um, so it's going to be like in the mid-90s, I think the end of the week, it was like around 90, 92, so quite, quite warm. Um, and uh, we had a little bit of rain this morning, so it's very humid out today, but, um, but nice. But the weekend was beautiful. I was here working all weekend, so basically I haven't really had a day off in the last six weeks. So getting all these things ready, all these videos, and that takes a lot of preparation, as you can imagine. So, and then plus I've been doing a lot of lives. I've had a very busy day because I did at 7.30 this morning US time. I did a live to Cakeology in India. And then, um, then as I said, at 11, I did a live to Italy and uh, to the FIP uh, GC, which is the Federation of Chocolate Gelato and Pastry. And they were, um, I'm, we're, making the, the, we're making the center, uh, Susan, we're making the flower center. All right, so we just made the center here, this part here, okay? Okay, so I'm going to show you the next, the next step, all right? So um, the inner pedal, so we're going to make the inside pedal. So we're going to take 25 grams of paste or 8 grams of air drying clay paste, which is on your list, all right? And uh, so what we're now doing, um, so we're going to take 8 grams, all right? And I've made this in a blush color. All right, and so then you're going to then roll this into a 10 centimeter sausage and cut into five two centimeter segments, all right? So you're just gonna roll this into, into a sausage. Okay, so it wants to be about a 10 centimeter, about a 10 centimeter sausage here, like this. All right, sorry, just come into the camera, there we go. All right, and then you can use your little, um, sorry, where's my, and you can use your uh, little scraper or a knife, just gonna cut these into two centimeter pieces, all right? So I know some of you are still waiting for your little flexi scraper. And I do apologize, you know, it's just unfortunately, everything is just in such a mess worldwide with shipping things and postage. Um, you know, like I sent some box of little mini pads to Katie Sue. Um, they usually take five or six days to get there and they took, you know, nine days. So, you know, it's sort of, uh, sorry, 13 days to get there. So. And then something they sent me, they sent Express to get there in two days. It took nine days. So it's sort of, uh, so, so you're going to cut your, um, as I said, your paste in. Now remember, the air drying clay will stick to itself. So just, just put them back into the little bag, all right? Now, you're just going to watch this next step, all right? So just don't try and, you won't do it at the same time. You're just going to watch, watch what I do, and then you can watch that, and then you can obviously uh, understand what I'm doing, and then you'll be able to go along with that. Now, um, so we're going to now, um, so once we've done that, we're going to then uh, going to take, cut into five, two, combine two and roll out pasta machine number three, then number six for sugar, or number three and number five for air drying clay. Now, if you don't have a pasta machine, you're just going to roll it out. So you're going to take two of those pieces. All right, so we're going to take two of those pieces there, just combine them together. Okay. 
And then of course on your sugar, you're just going to condition that. So with your sugar one, you're gonna work a little bit of vegetable fat into there, and you're gonna use a little bit of corn flour, gonna roll it out. And, uh, but with the air drying clay, we're gonna roll this out, um, obviously, to the um, width of the cutter. Now, we're gonna use, um, if you have the blossom cutter, this is what we're gonna use. If you don't have the blossom cutter, when you come to this step, you'll need to cut this out, all right? So just cut that out from the download. This is a two inch uh, blossom cutter, five centimeters, all right? So as I said, if you, so you're gonna take your, you're gonna take your paste, just gonna make it into a little log here like this. And remember with the air drying clay, if you put like a, uh, just, you know, like a wet piece of tissue or something on there, that will just, and so you're just gonna just make that, so you wanna just make it a little bit wider than the size of the cutter, all right? Now if you're using, if you're going to cut, use this as a template, you can either, once you've rolled this out, put this on top and cut around, or you can make this a little bit wider, all right? So you can make this a little bit wider. I'll show you how to do that. So you make it a little bit wider, and then you'll cut out the blossom, the seven centimeter blossom, and then you'll cut it out, all right? So I'm gonna go through my pasta machine on number three and number five, okay? So. And then remember, if you're doing this for sugar, you would use number three and number six, all right? Okay, so then you can cut out the, the blossom. So you'll need to cut out two of these, all right? So just gonna press the blossom on. If you are using the, to show you this, if you're using this cutter here, because we're gonna be cutting this down anyway, all right? So you can just sort of cut out the, sorry, I just need to re, just re-roll that. Shape-wise is just a, let me just show you that. All right, so if you're using the, as I said, the, and you can also just use one section if you find it easier. You can also just take one of the, one of the sections and then just roll this out. You can just roll this out freehand if you wish to as well, but just roll it out so it's big enough to cut out the, the blossom. So you see, you can actually just roll this out like this. All right, so you can just, so that will be enough for basically one blossom. So if you're, if you're gonna use the pattern, just put the, um, put the cutter on top, all right? Then you're just gonna take your excess paste, just pop that back in your bag. So if you're using the pattern, just because, you know, obviously we need to have these cutters a little bit smaller. So then you're gonna take your template. Now put a little, if you're working in air drying clay, put a little corn starch, corn flour on the top there. All right, but so all you're gonna do then is you're gonna just cut, cut around the this little shape here like that, okay? So you're just gonna cut off. And if you don't have the pattern, you can just sort of just, just guesstimate it, all right? Because it wants to be about five centimeters across, okay? Okay, and then you can just take your, just make sure they look okay. And then if you need to, if you need to trim up on the air drying clay, you can just trim that up just a little tiny bit, all right? And, um, but as I said, so you're, you're, I'm just gonna, you're gonna watch this first and then you're going to, then you're gonna do this, all right? So, so I've done one of each, but obviously if you've got the cutter, you're gonna cut out two of those, all right? So, so, you, so you're gonna cut out two of those blossom shapes. Now your scraps of paste will go back into your bag. And then once your scraps of paste, so we've actually finished with that cutter now. So scraps of paste will just go back into your bag. Now with the um, first inner petals, we're not going to vein those, all right, because you don't really see them. So we're going to then, so we're gonna keep one blossom in the plastic flap, the, take the other blossom shape and soften edge slightly using shaft of companion tool on mini pad, back of rose veiner or silicone mini mat, all right? So we're gonna use your uh, companion tool, which we have um, here, there we go. We got the, this is a new little holder that I had made by Donald, who's one of our um, members in Florida. So we've just got some more of those in stock. So that's made to hold your companion tool and it's great for other little tools and things as well. All right, so, so we're gonna soften so you can use your rose mat. You could do this on your pad, all right? So you could do this on your little uh, mini pad. You can also do this on the silicone mat. Sorry, just getting my, there is my little pad there. So if you've got, and of course it could be a regular size pad as well. Okay, so you're just gonna take, 
take this and um, I'm just going to peel this off. It's a little, as I said, a little humid in here. There we go. I'm just going to pop that onto the onto here. All right. So what we're going to do here with the um, air drying clay one, I'm going to work the pedals like this, mainly on the sort of the top the top edge of this, using the shaft of my tool here. All right. Now remember, when you're doing a sugar one, if this is sugar. This is where you can use your balling tool, okay? So you can go around, but with air drying clay, you'll typically tear it, okay? Um, so as I said, with the air drying clay especially, we're gonna use more of this technique, which is actually the way I do most of my sugar ones now anyway. But so remember, you can do this on a pad. If you don't have a pad and you've got a silicone vein, you can just do this on the silicone um, vein here. And then you can also use this little mat. Now, uh, we are going to be getting some of these in the UK. It's just that the company is on close down at the moment. So a lot of companies are starting to open up in the US. So we will have these soon. All right. So you're just going to soften that like this. Now, this is going to go on to, and of course, you can use your little, um, you're going to put this onto a cosmetic sponge. So this is a cosmetic sponge with a hole in it. All right. And then once you've done that, um, it says in your instructions, then you're going to, um, so we're going to turn over and place on cosmetic sponge. All right. So I'm going to just turn, turn this over. All right. So I'm actually turning this over because when you actually bring this together, that will give you your outside. All right. So once you, once you've softened it, you turn it over and then you're going to then, um, and you're going to press the Dresden tool against each pedal base and brush egg white or apply glue over the floral tape bud. So the Dresden tool, Dresden tool is this one here. You're just going to press the Dresden tool at the bottom of each of the pedals to so you see what I'm doing is I'm actually almost like hollowing the pedals like this. So you're going to get this sort of hollow at the base of each of the pedals. Okay. And then you're going to take, now you can use your glue if you're using the air drying clay glue in a bottle like this or in a bra with a brush, just brush that over your, um, so if you're using a bottle, but you just need a little tiny bit of this, you know, I mean, remember the air drying clay sticks to itself, but generally I would use a little tiny bit of glue just to sort of anchor things. So just a little bit of glue on each side. And if you're using, obviously, paste, you're going to use um, edible glue or you're going to be using um, egg white. Okay. And then what you do here is you're going to thread this down through the middle. Okay. So you're going to bring this through to the middle here. And you want to bring this so each petal will sit in the middle of the flower like that. Okay. Now then, uh, once we've done that, carefully pinch each petal around the bud and then pinch above the floral tape bud with tweezers. So what we're going to do here, you're going to pinch like this. See what I'm doing is I'm coming in with my thumb and finger. You're going to pinch, you're going to pinch. Just make sure that each petal is in the middle, is that each of those floral tape buds is in the middle here like this, and you're going to pinch here. All right, and you just want to try and tuck them in so you can see that they're actually sort of individual. So it looks, you see, it looks a bit like a petunia sort of shaped flower. All right. And then you're going to take some tweezers right now with tweezers. What I'm going to do is I'm with the tweezers. I'm going just above just a little bit. Of, so I'm going to just close that up. So I'm just going to pinch above the top. You see how, so what it's doing is closing it up. Now don't do that too hard. All right. Because you're obviously don't want to be too strong with your tweezers. And then you're going to just push this together. All right. So you're just going to push it together. So you see how you're going to create this nice flower center. Now with your companion tool, you're just going to just push in with your companion tool and you're just going to just use the rounded end of the companion tool just to sort of open up the top of this so you get this. So it looks fairly symmetrical. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it looks fairly symmetrical there. Right. The important thing is here, you can't see the wire in the middle there. All right. And then, so that's going to be the first stage and I'm just going to show you the next step and then I'm going to give you time to do that and then you can ask questions and things like that. Now, so then the, then you're going to take the second blossom, place on the pad and lengthen slightly at the tip, then continue as the first stage. So when you do the next one, all right, we're going to remember with your blossom, if you're using the template there, just obviously just, so we're going to put it onto a pad or you can do this also on the back of your silicone mat. And you can use the shaft of your companion tool. So we're just going to just roll that just to make the end a little bit longer. All right. So what we're doing here is we're making this just a little bit longer, just slightly. Now, if you had, like I have a set of um, blossom cutters um, that 
um, like for example, PME and GEM have some. Um, so there are some that you get which are basically like about five centimeters, then six centimeters. So if you were doing this again, you do have a set of smaller blossom cutters, you can just use obviously the next size up. But typically when I teach this, I just do it like that so it doesn't get so confusing. So you're just making this next one just a little bit longer. All right, and then again, you're going to now just going to just work the pedal. So with your companion tool, you're just going to thin your edge of your pedals here. And remember, I'm using the um, companion tool, you know, at an angle. So you're going at an angle like this. And this is how I, you know, do a lot of my uh, flowers and leaves now. Just I find that it sort of uh, works really well like this because you get that little bit more of pressure point there. So you see how we're going to frill this one in the same way. And then, uh, so once we've done that, we're going to attach in the same way without the tweezers, using egg white on the blossom and pressing around the first stage in between using a companion tool. So, um, so if you obviously are going to do, you just take this one, this just goes in the straight up here. And then again, you're going to just press the Dresden tool at the bottom of each of the pedals. Three, four, five. All right, now you can do it, you can do it this way. You can come from the outside to the center, or you can obviously do this. And then now on the sugar, on the sugar one, you're going to brush some egg white about halfway up. All right. Um, and then, um, but obviously on the air drying clay one, we don't need to do anything on here. Okay. We're just going to just take this. Now, the other thing is when you have the wire there, if your wires are not taped all the way down or they're a little uneven, you might want to just take your wire cutters and with your wire cutters, just cut that end of that wire, okay? Just carefully so that you have a nice clean uh, end there. All right, so the next one you're going to just take, so you're going to thread that through the middle here like so, and this is just going to go in the same, same place. Remember, on the air drying clay, we don't need basically anything on there. And then all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to just put it on. Okay, and I'm just pinching here. It's going to be my next one here because the air drying clay, remember, it sticks to itself. Okay, and then again, you're going to just take this off. And then all we're going to do here is with your companion tool, you're just going to push in between the pedals with your companion tool like this. All right. And you see how you're going to get then the shape of the, obviously, there. If you do see any wire parts there, just, just if you do see any wire, just sort of close that, that open, uh, close that up. But you see how you're going to get this nice shape here on your, just going to open this out like that. Now this is very similar to when we make a columbine, which is the aquilegia. That is made in a similar way to this, you know, so there are several flowers that have this type of, of center. All right. So if you want to now do that, all right, so we're going to do that now. Okay. And uh, if you have any questions, um, and um, yeah, so if you're having, yeah, this clear the photo, it might be just your Wi-Fi. I mean, unfortunately, with everybody on lockdown and that, everybody's obviously, especially in the UK, everybody's home. A lot of people are home and obviously the whole family is on the internet. So I think everything's very clear here. So it may be just the Wi-Fi um, connection. It does sort of go up and down. And we actually have just had all of our, uh, we've had cables in just, fin we're just finishing it off actually today. but. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so we are actually at 12, 12 um, output, which is, is uh, basically 12 is, is high, you know, high, uh, very, good. very good output. But uh, sometimes things drop down a little bit. So, hi, Sheila. So everybody doing good? Obviously, those of you who are not working, you know, not actually making your flour, you know, you can so go and make a cup of tea or get a glass of wine or something while your others of us are working. Okay. This is a fun class because you can drink as well. So, <laughs> but um, so you've got the, uh, as I said, your little uh, first stage roses, uh, first stage of the rose. Yes, yeah, so my my. It's clear because we've got a twelve signal here. As I said, you know, we've just um, as I said, we're having all of our cameras hardwired into the Ethernet because obviously that's the problem with Wi-Fi. It goes in and out. But um, but as I said, it's sort of. Uh, So 
So remember, you can, if you're not using a pasta machine, just roll out one piece, cut out a blossom, one piece, cut out a blossom. And then if you're doing the... But just remember, if you're working with the sugar, you need to just make sure you put the, with the sugar, you need to make sure you put the, um, your little bit of shortening into there, your tracks, okay? But I said, if you're, if you're not using a pasta machine, you'll probably find it's easier just to sort of roll out the pieces separate, all right? So just use one section for one blossom. I'm just getting things ready for the next step, that's all, so. I'm not sure who else of the design team. I know we have Shaley is watching, so Shaley is obviously in California, so I'm not sure who else of the design team is watching, but Shaley does a lot of, uh, and she, Shaley's going to be doing a, one of the lessons. I hope everybody enjoyed Veronica's the other day on the olives and you know saw the beautiful olives. Every see the olives that Clive made, they were really beautiful. So um, fun to do with air drying clay as well. So, you know, for like the kitchen or something like that, especially if you have a sort of Italian theme kitchen, it's very nice. And you know, like, obviously with the air drying clay, you, you just have to be, like I showed in the video, just a little bit, I mean, it's very forgiving, but you just have to be a little bit delicate when you're pulling it off of the plastic and stuff like that, because it's, um, as I said, there's a little different sort of consistency. It's a little bit more clingy. Everybody doing okay? Everybody here? Hi, Karen. So Karen's here as well, so. Karen's been doing a lot of bicycle rides. It's been posting on her. Because Karen works for Katie Sue. So Karen is involved with a lot of the product development and uh, you, on air drying clay, cornstarch is actually better, Susan. Some people use like baby talc, um, but generally cornstarch because powdered sugar is a little bit more grainy. If you have cornstarch, if you don't, just use whatever you have, okay? But uh, generally on the air drying clay, I use generally a little bit of cornstarch if it's if it's a little sticky. Now, also, if you're using a lot of cornstarch on the air drying clay, um, because it depends on how fresh it is, you know, like in obviously the first lesson we talked about that, and um, if your um, air drying clay is a little wet, you can just leave it for a couple of minutes just to almost like dehydrate, uh, uh, dry a little bit in the air because it obviously has water in it. So the thing is, is that sometimes you'd roll it out and then just leave it for a couple of minutes to, um, And I've just been doing, getting, like I would if you were in my actual classroom, you know, while the students are working, I'm getting ready for the next step. Oh, sorry, Karen. I thought it was Jack. That's right. Sorry. It's Jack that's been on a bike, not Karen. Okay. <laughs> so Jack Heath is, uh, works for Katie Sue. So she's in charge of a lot of the product development. Karen does, did the beautiful owl. Okay. Remember the beautiful owl that Karen made with the foliage? And, uh, so. But uh, Karen that works a lot in polymer clays and air drying clays and things. And yeah, so it's very sticky. And obviously, you're down in Florida as well, Susan. So, but just leave you just leave it out for a couple of minutes. It will just dry out a little bit, and um, it's. Um, but you, you, um, it, it will stick. And when you're, if you are using a lot, I was going to say, like if you are using a lot of um, corn starch, corn flour on your paste, you know, when you put the, you can also, if you want to put, if you're using the air drying clay, just put a little bit of glue if you need to at the bottom of the petals, all right? Remember the air drying clay sticks to itself, all right? Um, but uh, I'd say, and just as the air drying clay, because it will shrink a little bit, it's going to tighten up, but just make sure it's looking okay, all right? And, um, But just as you, as you start to finish off, all right, so as you, those of you working, if you, like, when you finish this part, if you just sort of let me, sort of just start letting me know that you finished or something like that, so then I can um, just sort of have an idea, because just like in a class, you know, obviously, 
I'm not sure exactly how many people. We are going to um, maybe next try, we're going to try maybe a Zoom one, which means you actually will all be on the screen as well. Because uh, Zoom now has got a capability actually up to 500 people. Um, but uh, so, as I said, that's something that we're looking into, sort of how that would all work. But uh, that would mean that I could actually, if I wanted to pull you all up, I could pull you up onto the screen. But uh, so I'd actually see if you're behaving yourself and if you've. But um, so, um, but as I said, we're we're going to just uh, work through this. Carol's finished, so you get a green star, Carol. So great green heart. So good job. So, um, but just uh, as I said, just do your, do your first pedal and pinch that up and then your second pedal. Now with the sugar one, if you're doing sugar, it should be okay at this stage, but remember if you do need to hang it, you know, hang it upside down for a few minutes, you can do. You know, and um, I know things are a little bit out of order because it's just like, because obviously we started later than we originally planned. When we started the, pro, the whole um, club, we started a little bit later than we originally had planned. Um, and uh, so, um, but in, um, as I said, next week, um, we have the lesson on uh, Monday. So this, on Thursday, we'll be finishing off the David Austin Rose. Then next Monday will be the uh, live, and then I'll be doing the video of the hibiscus, so the hibiscus flower and bud and leaves. And then um, I will be, so Lizette's finished as well. And, um, and then um, I will be, then Chrissy, Chrissy Boone, who's watching as well. So Chrissy is from Canada. So Chrissy has a company called Ice in, Inspirations and uh, Too Nice to Slice is her bakery. And Chrissy is also a Renshaw ambassador uh, with me in the US, Northern America and Canada. And uh, Chrissy is going to be doing, like uh, Veronica did last week, Chrissy is going to be give, doing the lesson on um, sort of tropical foliage, okay? So uh, Chrissy is just actually filming that at the moment. And then the following week is going to be um, on the Monday, will be, uh, so we'll be right at the beginning of June then, it's going to be, um, a lesson on like making the scratch um, homemade gum paste, the Tylos gum paste, and learn lots of tips on how to color it in the mixer, and then using the Renshaw paste, using the Rati's paste, and just lots of little tips about storage and freezing it and things like that. And uh, so that will, um, as I said, we'll be going through that. And then the uh, on the Thursday um, in two, three weeks time is going to be all about like equipment. So really it's going to go through about like what about setting up the styrofoam block and the magnet and things like that. And um, I'm also going to show you how I make my little cornstarch bags and talk about edible glue and just lots and lots of different things there. All right, so Marianne's finished and Lisette's finished, okay. So we'll just give everybody a couple of minutes and then you can, uh, we're going to go on. But as I said, you know, in the directions it's written at like a two, but if you just use one, one section per blossom, all right, if you're rolling it out by hand, which is what I've done, uh, that, that will I sort of gauge the pace wise to make sure you have enough, okay? Now don't, don't start using more of the paste, all right, or eating it if you're making a gum paste one because you, this is all being portioned out for exactly the right amount, okay? Because we've got our bud to do and then what you have left will be used for the, will be used for the uh, added to the white to make the outside petals, okay? All right, so, um, so where I said, so we've got some people finished, so, um, I'm not sure how many people are actually working, um, so. So if you, have, if you have finished this part, all right, if you want to basically just go ahead, just while I, um, and if you could just let me know in camera, ha ha maybe if you're still working, all right, so that I know, but if you finish this part here, if you wanna go ahead and uh, either take two more sections, or if you want to take one section, roll it out, you're gonna cut this out with the smallest size of your NL Flower Pro Pro cut Cutter. This is the seven centimeter one, all right? And then you're gonna do that um, with the another one, all right? So basically you take one section, roll it out, cut that out, one section, roll it out, cut it out, all right? Um, but as I said, I'm using, uh, yeah, that's fine. Elfin, as I said, it's totally fine. As I said, you can just watch, obviously, and then, um, and then uh, you can, Tina's working at her job, okay? So she's watching as well. Um, but as I said, you can watch it in replay, and as I said, you've got the instructions, so you should be able to go through this easily, all right? And um, so, anyway, so that's gonna be the, um, that will be the first, the first step, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and just, um, 
show you the next step, all right? So then if you, if you uh, so we can show you the next part of it. So we're going to, um, then we're going to then continue with two 70 millimeter cutters. This is a small flower pro five petal rose cutter. These can be really rolled out using two more sections or individually, all right? Now, so one of these is going to go on as is, frilled. One will be elongated. So basically what we've done is we've established four different sizes of petals. We had the, like the five centimeter, two inch one, then we made it slightly longer. Then this one is seven centimeters. Then we're going to do a little bit about seven and a half centimeters, all right? So uh, this is just the, the way that we build up the and obviously when you finish your roses on Thursday, you know, I'm interested, love to see what you've made and the different colors and things. So remember, as I said, just roll this with your little companion tool. Now some um, people that work with air drying clay use a metal ball tool, all right? So if you imagine this is a metal ball tool like this, all right? Um, and then you can also use, this is where like that we, we have this for the bigger petals later, but you could use a smaller marble. And what you do with the air drying clay is you would just roll back and forward with something like a glass marble or a metal ball tool. But it's just a plastic one typically sort of tears it. Um, so a lot of people who are working air drying clay use, um, use metal balling tools, all right? There are, you can find metal balling tools in sets um, on the market. Um, and uh, as I said, they, you know, they're, uh, you usually buy them in a set. You can buy them pretty inexpensively. Something you can also find on Amazon as well. All right, so this is the, so remember these ones, you know, from here, we're not turning these over. We're just leaving them as is, all right? It's just that first one you turn over. So then we're gonna take the, um, so now we're gonna take your sponge again. So we're gonna go onto your sponge and then you will take your um, Dresden tool. So again, each time. Now remember, as I said, if you're doing the egg white, if you're using, uh, doing a sugar one, you'll need to brush your egg white onto here. All right, so this was a sugar one, you would brush your egg white, usually about sort of third to halfway down, okay? But on the air drying clay one, it will stick to itself, okay? So then you're gonna take your, so this one is gonna come on here now. All right, and again, you see how it's just gonna come on and then again, you're gonna pinch it. You're just gonna pinch it. So you're just gonna pinch this like this. So basically what you're doing is each of these layers, you're just gonna pinch, pinch it around like this. And then again, with your companion tool, so just take off your foam. So then what I do with my companion tool is I just push. So you see with the companion tool, see what I'm doing here? I'm pushing in between the layers of petals. So that's just gonna give you that nice shape here, like that, all right? And just sort of open this out. Now, some people do this with um, individual petals, you know, with like a, um, there are plastic and metal blossom, cut, uh, uh, like rose petal cutters you can buy. But just going to just create this. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect because I said this is, this is a, though it's a fairly formal rose, meaning that the center of this, the petals are, you have like five petals. But as I said, you see how you're just doing the grouping like this, all right? And um, this, this, this is um, a pad. This is a mini pad, all right? So it's something we sell on our website, but Katie Sue has got these. They're just uh, gonna be loaded on in the next couple of days. Um, we sent some over, but this is a mini foam pad, all right? So this is a little foam. A lot of you have maybe like a PME one or a Cell Kicks one, the yellow one. Um, but it's just, this is very useful for smaller, smaller flowers, all right? And then the, um, so then we're gonna take then the second petal out. Remember, I'm just peeling this gently off of here. And then we're gonna do this, we're gonna treat this just like we did before. So we're gonna, and also remember with the um, air drying clay, if the petals do fuse together, just use your scissors. Don't cut on the pad because you'll damage it, but you can just, if the petals do, as I said, because they have a tendency sometimes to, to stick together because obviously it just fuses together. All right, and then you're just gonna just make this just a little bit longer. So literally, I'm just rolling this just a little tiny bit longer. Now you could also do that with a, like if you have a stick like this, it's called a, like a cell stick. This is my large stick, you know, a stick like this you could use as well. But the companion tool, you'll notice how I use my companion tool for a lot of, a lot of things I do. All right, so this is just gonna make it just a little bit longer, you see? And then again, we're going to then just gonna frill and ruffle, mostly gonna do about the top half of the petal here. Now you can also even do this on your, 
um, finger as well. You know, with the air drying clay, a lot of people that do air drying clay actually just work on the, uh, your finger as well. So it's really what you find, what you ultimately find easiest to, to work with, all right? But remember, as I said, you can do this on your, I'm just also doing it on here because it's a little bit contrasty as well. Now remember also with air drying clay, if you do have a little tear, like if you're a bit rough with it and you have a little tear, you can just use a pair of scissors and you can just trim that up. You can also do that on sugar as well, all right? As I said, it's just like watching a video, but it's a little bit more interactive because, you know, obviously in, we've done this so you can have a go at this as well. All right, and then this is going to go onto your, onto your cosmetic sponge. All right, so this is going to give us the fourth pedal here. And it's going to press. So use this, you know, press, you see, because when we press in between the pedal, the bottom of the pedal, what it's going to do is it's going to almost like hollow it. So it means that your pedals will then almost have that sort of taco shape, that sort of V shape that they'll go around the bottom there. But just remember, if you, you know, if you need to, like if it feels like it's not sticking, all right, and, said, and especially if you do use a lot of, um, you can just put a little tiny bit of glue onto here, but of course on sugar ones, each layer will need to have glue on the egg white on the inside part. Okay, and then we're gonna just pop this through the center here. Gonna bring this up. Again, we're gonna now just bring this up here. And this is gonna just come around. This is gonna just give you the out, the, the last pedals, okay? Because remember, these are these are a little bit um, longer, and you can also just stretch them up a little bit, a little bit, little tiny bit as well. You know, with the air drying clay and the sugar, just, just stretch this up a little bit. All right, and so again, you're just going to just pinch this on. Sorry, I just was checking on my position there. And then again, just going to take this off, and then you're just going to just come in, in between with your companion tool, two, three, four, like this, all right? And then just make sure that you're, just open this up. All right, and that's gonna be your first stage. Um, that's gonna be the first stage, all right? Now, if you're doing air drying clay, of course, this can just stay up like this, all right? So this can just stay like this. If you're doing um, a sugar one, you need to hang that, all right? So um, now again, you know, hangers, I talk a little bit about that, but uh, there's lots of, you know, um, Wilton have one, um, FMM have one. You can also make one with a kebab skewer and just like a piece of 18 gauge wire. That's what typically I do a lot when I travel, all right? And then this is, uh, you know, the one I use on a lot of my videos, all right? So this is a large uh, drying rack, all right? And this is actually, um, we, something we do sell in Atlanta as well. And it's a more of a seasonal thing, but it's actually used for um, in uh, lockers. In, uh, so it's basically like a, like a locker shelf. And, um, but they come in different height. You get the taller ones and the shallow ones. But also places like Ikea and obviously other things. What it's, it's called a mini pad, um, Madeline. The, uh, it, the little black uh, square pad is, uh, as I said, is called the mini pad. But uh, as I said, you know, so you'll see me use that like for sunflowers and things like that. So if you were doing a sugar one, obviously you just want to just hang this. But uh, also uh, in some of my videos, like the videos last week, I used a little FMM one. Let's get that to show you, which is this one here. And I know it's like Brian, who's one of our students down in Florida, because he posted uh, yesterday, he'd be making some uh, blossoms and things. Wilton do a two-tier version of this. Uh, the only thing, just be very careful with the Wilton one, because it's a little top heavy if you put, if, you, if you're gonna do, imagine this is double the height of this. So if you are gonna use the Wilton one, what you want to do is to put some, um, put uh, the lighter flowers, like little blossoms and that, but put your heavier roses on the bottom, okay, because you don't want it to be topple over. But as I said, so just, just hang that upside down. And also in, uh, when we talk in a couple of weeks about equipment, this is where you could, if you had your food dehydrator, just hang this in your food dehydrator, okay? And uh, basically, uh, air drying clay, you don't need to, but with sugar one, if you're making several of these, like you could do one, then you could do two, then you could do three, put them in the food dehydrator, and then literally, you know, 15, 20 minutes later, you'd be dry enough to go on to the next stage, all right? And then once you've got your outside pedals on, you could then, of course, actually hang this uh, in the food dehydrator, slide the top shelf in, and it will be then just leave it in there basically like overnight or for sort of six to eight hours, it'll be totally dry, okay? So the food dehydrator is really good for especially flowers like peonies and sunflowers that have multiple layers in them. 
um, it really, really helps a lot with that. Okay, but anyway, so that's that's uh, going to be your first your first stage. Remember, I'm working in the air drying clay. All right, so I don't need to tip this. I don't need to turn this over. But those of you in sugar, you'll need to turn this um, upside down. Hi, Jackie. So from Wales. So we have uh, several students from Wales. So that's great. So, and um, will there be another hands-on class because? And I'll be prepared. Oh yeah, yeah. So Elfin too. Actually, it's about once a month we have a hands-on class. All right. And so our next one is. I'll just go and get them to show you. Um, you know, and I realize some of you are waiting for your. Uh, but but this is the the. These are the next hands-on class. All right. So this is going to be. The sweet pea. So we're going to be doing the sweet peas, and uh, this is air drying clay. This is sugar. Again, the only reason I can tell the difference is the weight. All right, because I made these in exactly the same color, and that's where I was talking about that you could match your sugar flowers. So, like, you could have, say, you know, for the mother's mother or mother-in-law's corsages, you could have air drying clay, and then you could do sugar on the cake if you wanted to. Or, as I said, be, but as I said, it's sort of wonderful because you see how they they look exactly the same. All right. Um, and uh, slight, slightly a little bit, tiny bit smaller, but again, very, very marginal. Um, but as obviously the weight is the thing that gives the air drying clay away. And that's also like, um, you know, uh, uh, Julie, who Julie um, is one of our design team members. She is a, was a judge for the British Sugar Craft Guild and obviously judged a lot of the competitions. And um, so she um, obviously posted about, you know, like in a competition, you're not allowed, just like a B British Sugar Craft, like say Cake International, you're not allowed to use obviously other, anything other than sugar. And pretty much most of the main shows in the US are like that. But if I was ever in doubt, I would just like basically just put my hand under the flower and feel the weight of it because, you know, this is basically weighs nothing, whereas this, obviously this is heavy because it's sugar. But this will be your um, this will be your June play date. All right, so you're going to be making the uh, sweet peas and sweet pea flowers and buds and leaves, and then the second lesson we'll do the color in the calyxes, the tendrils, and things like that. All right, so that's a really fun one. But that will be in June. But I realize you know some of you are just you know obviously Flower Pro has been we've been going the club has been going a month, so about once a month we will be having a play date. And uh, most of those will be over two sessions because just like when we do sugar flowers, generally you're, um, you're going to normally, like, like most of my classes I teach with sugar, are normally two days or three days or five days because obviously you have to wait for things to dry. And so that's why we can't do this all in one lesson, okay? Um, but obviously air drying clay is a little different. You can go through all the materials and that. Um, and uh, yeah, Patricia, yes. Yeah, so the, the, you basically can just watch the YouTube on this, all right? Because it's basically, it's a, it's a sort of a, an online class, so you can just watch this. Obviously, you can forward through the, the bits of me talking, okay? But anyway, so you've got your handouts and things. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so Marianne is finished. So we've got, and uh, Fiona's watching. So as I said, so that will be your, so just hang that upside down if you're doing a sugar one, or as I said, air drying clay, you can just stand it up like that. And uh, then what we're going to be doing is moving on to the bud, and then we're going to be going on to the um, the leaves. So. Okay, so that's good. So Linda, you've got yours, so you can play tomorrow. Yep. So as I said, you can just watch this, and obviously you've got your handouts and things there. And um, so, so is everybody everybody okay for me to go on to the next step? Is everybody okay? All right. Yep. So as I said, so you this is your first part of your David Austin rose. All right. So and I usually do four layers. You could do five. Um, and um, Fiona has given up. It's been a t okay. What happened, Fiona? Rose. Okay. Well, you can watch. You can watch it again. I mean, it takes a little practice. All right. So, but uh, as I said, just uh, it just uh, like all of these things takes a little bit of practice. That's also why you're here and have the support of me and the design team and obviously all the other members to get you through it. Okay. And uh, somebody asked a question about dehumidifier. Um, the one I use is the um, is the uh, the brand I use is the I forgot the name of it now. Uh, let me just I'll just get the front of it just to show you. Thank you. 
Sorry, I'll, br I'll bring it into camera and I'll get Scott, but um, Ex this Excalibur is the brand, all right? So this is the Excalibur brand here. Um, this is, I'm going to get Scott just to, just to um, come over here. And as I said, when we do, when I do the little, um, the lesson on using the equipment. But see, so on the, on the food dehydrator, it has these shelves. Let me just get one of the. So this is the five shelf one. I also have a nine shelf one. So they have this like mesh on them, you see? So this is great like when you flood royal icing cookies or you're putting in little flowers. You can also put your crepe foam, your um, uh, convoluted foam on here as well and put that in there. But when, I, when I'm using it just for drying flowers to hang, what I've done is I've taken the mesh off like this, you see? And then what you can actually do is you can just put your flower, so if this was a sugar one, you can just put this in and then you can come from underneath, put the wire around, and then you see you just would put that into the de dehydrator like that and you put the lid on. I've got it set at 115, so 115, which is 46 degrees centigrade, all right? And when I do the lesson, I'll sort of show you the top of it and everything as well. But it's a very useful, um, especially those of you that live in a humid area, humid environment, it's a really, really great way to dry your sugar flowers. When you flood cookies, you can use it for cake lace. You can actually also bake meringues in here as well. So you can do meringues in here. Um, so you're almost using it as a low temperature oven. Um, so it's a very, very useful, but for cake, you know, it's great to do all sorts of things. Usually the air drying clay, we don't have to obviously to use that but as I said that would be if you were doing a sugar one you see and then um, but that's how you would use the food food dehydrator and it has a timer on there I like I like the Excalibur one now there are food dehydrators that are obviously look like that which is going to be fine as well um, and one of our members today um, posted one um, Brian just got one down in Florida and uh, the the ones that are sort of like the like almost an oven are the best type of ones the ones that are round or oval that where you stack them they're a little bit difficult because you can't really use them to hang flowers in um, now some people use their oven all right so you could also if you have especially a convection fan assisted oven you could put it onto lowest temperature then switch it off and then just hang your your rose your flowers on the uh, obviously rack in the oven and if you've got a fan just keep the fan running and then what that's going to do that's again just warm air is circulating but the food dehydrator I mean I, I use this all the time I mean the food dehydrator is a great um, you know it's an investment um, just like a pasta machine it sort of uh, saves a lot of time but it also means when I'm doing a cake and I was making say like a tiara or letters or shoe or something like that I want to dry I can just literally put it in there leave it in there a few hours all right okay so we're gonna move on to the um, yeah don't give up Fiona you'll be fine as I said just have you can watch the next part and then you can have a little practice all right and as I said you know you've got a couple of days because and then we'll be coming back on um, coming back on um, Thursday, all right? So we're going to come back for so for the sugar one, hang upside down to dry a little, all right? We're going to come back to the outer petals in a little while, right? We're going to go on to the next page and we're going to do the bud. Now for the bud, we're going to take one of the uh, remaining 20 gauge wires, okay? So this is a 20 gauge wire here and we're going to use some half width green floral tape. So we're going to take half width green, green floral tape here we're going to make a floral tape bud. So just as we did before, um, we're going to use 10 times hook times 15. So this is pretty much like following the directions in book one. And if you watch my rose video, all right, it's going to go around once, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I right, just remember, keep tension on the wire here. And then you're going to then hook that over. All right, so you're going to hook that over onto the top like this. And then we're going to go 15 times on top. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, of course, you don't always use buds, but uh, we're going to make this more like a specimen with the bud and the rose and the leaves. But sometimes on a more of a modern cake, if it was on a wedding cake, I might just use the flower. Or if you're putting this on a hat, for example, or a you know, wreath or something in your home, you might just use it just as the flower. But we're going to make the bud. So you make the floral tape bud. And then uh, once we've done that, we're going to take a number 10 small ball of paste. All right. So we're going to use the leftover paste you have. And basically, one section should be about a 10 small. Might need to take a little tiny bit off of this. 
you know, this preparation for this, you know, I spent two days getting ready with, because obviously you could write in all the handouts and of course making sure that you knew exactly the size you need and stuff like that. All right. And so then you're going to take your, so this is going to be your 10 small. Now remember again with air drying clay, I just condition it a little bit. You know, you don't have to obviously add the shortening to it. Although you can do, um, Nori Mackay, who's one of our design team members. Um, she sometimes works a little bit of shortening into it. And remember, if it got stiff, you can add a little bit of water to it, like I showed in the class as well. So then we're going to, um, so we're going to then take your, so we're going to brush floral tape bud with egg white or a little bit of glue onto here. So we're going to take a little bit of egg white onto here. Yeah, so like the one I have in the UK, the food dehydrator I have in the UK is, uh, actually is really nice because it's my, my exact sort of flower pro green but um, it's a german brand kerry griffith found it on uh, amazon but uh, as i said any of the ones that look like an oven are the ones that are the best all right because basically they're they're more efficient especially if you do like flooded cookies and stuff like that so anyway, so we're going to take the floral tape bud you're going to insert that into the paste whether it's sugar now remember just use a little bit of corn flour around there like so going to make that into your basic. So we're making like a rose cone. This is like the all in one cone. And like next week, you'll see me using the small cone. I'll be using that for the when we do the hibiscus bud, you know, so I use this a lot. All right. So then you're going to put that into the cone mold and just rotate that around just a couple of times. All right. So you can see we've got the excess paste we don't need. So we're just going to just trim that off the bottom there like so. All right, I'm going to pop your excess paste back into your bag. Now also remember when you're working with sugar, um, if you're using like a, a paste, um, like for example, a Renshaw paste or even a um, scratch paste, if you find you need a little bit of egg white into it, if it's a little tough, just add a little tiny bit of egg white. So you can just put a little bit of egg white into your paste as well. So then we're going to make this just like we would a rosebud. So we're going to fold over the top. So you're really almost making the top dull. And then we're going to pinch like the little fish tail. All right. So you just see how I'm just going to pinch. So I'm just going to pinch this with my fingers like this. So you see how you're going to create this like fish tail shape. Now it wants to be quite, quite thin on the edge. All right. And it wants to be fairly square here. All right. So this part here is fairly square. We're then going to take your veiner. Now it doesn't matter whether which side of the veiner you use, uh, meaning the, the main part of the veiner or the uh, back part of the veiner here. Um, and then what we're going to do then is you're going to then, um, it says here, uh, pinch like a fishtail vein both sides on one of the pedals from the Flower Pro Ultimate Pedal Vein, holding a wire like a hoover or vacuum cleaner. Okay, so think of doing your hoovering or your vacuum cleaner like this. All right, sorry, though, I've, just got, I've just got a text on my screen, so just so I can see what's going on. All right, so you see how you put it on there like that. And then with your cosmetic sponge, you press on there, and then you turn it over, and then you do it on the other pedal. All right. Now you'll lose it a little bit on the inside one, but you're basically veining both sides. All right. And then the side that you've done last will be your outside part of your flower. Now then once we've done that, we're going to frill the edge using a companion tool, then pleat and pinch to make a compact frill top. All right. So then we're going to take your, so as I said, you can do this onto the, on the edge of the pad here. So you can just sort of hold this on your, on your pad here. And you can also do this like on your, a lot of times when I'm doing like this, I would do this on my finger because it's a little bit uh, on your finger here is just a little bit easier to access, but you're just going to just almost like, just like we did before. And then I'm going to actually going to pleat this. So you're just going to make like little tiny pleats. All right. So you're just going to just do these little tiny pleats and you just almost just sort of like pull it around like that. So you just almost make like a fan. So you can see here, you're going to make like a fan and you almost just pull it around like that. So you're going to get this little, just almost this little squashed center on it. All right. And that is basically how we make the center. It's pretty easy to make uh, the little bud uh, center there. All right. I'm just going to mold this around and that's going to be your, your bud because you'll see how when that, you see, once that's finished, that's going to be your bud. That's how it will look. You see? All right. So it's uh, an easy one to do. So obviously those of you, um, then you pinch the top to make a compact frilled top. 
All right, so those of you that are working, if you want to whip up a bud, all right? Um, so just while, while that's going on, um, so just as I said, you can just, so you just mark around here. So that's our bud finished. And remember, we we're doing the calyxes on Thursday, all right? So that's the second part on Thursday. But those of you that are obviously just got your clay or whatever, you know, tomorrow or Wednesday, you can have a go at doing this. And then obviously it will be nice and dry for Thursday. Um, so tomorrow, um, I did post this on the um, group page, obviously on the club page. I am doing a, um, a Facebook Live with Icing Images. Icing Images is an American company that produce wafer paper and icing sheets and like Cricut printers and printed, uh, you know, different files to print off things. Um, and uh, so I'm doing a live with them tomorrow at 3 p.m. Um, Eastern USA time. So that will obviously be 8 p.m. UK time. And, um, but they are, um, that's going to be on using the Flower Pro for wafer paper. And so I'll actually be showing using my Flower Pro poppy um, and making a wafer paper poppy. If you look on the club um, Facebook group, I posted a photograph of it. And I'll also be showing you a brand new clay I've developed using Icing Images product that is uh, going to be a clay. I'm calling it a clay. Um, and, uh, but basically you can use that to then make the poppy center, the poppy buds, um, the seed head, things like that. Um, but you can also use that to make bows and drapes and uh, lots of fun things. So I've been playing around with the Flower Pro, like the pine cone, it works wonderful with. Um, so it's just an alternative. So it's almost a little bit like, clay-wise, it's a, a little bit denser than the gum paste. But uh, as I said, so it's almost going to be like an edible version of your air drying clay in the respect that the things stay flexible. So like the poppy petals I'll show you tomorrow. Um, and we will be um, on nicholaslodge.com. So and I put all this information yesterday. So if you go to, um, to my um, nicholaslodge.com and you click on recipes and templates, there is the downloadable instructions for the poppy. And then at 3 p.m. tomorrow, um, when we launch, the, when we do the Facebook Live, so at 3 p.m. or afterwards tomorrow, so 8 p.m. or after tomorrow, you'll be able to download the recipe um, for the clay. And then also there's a link to my YouTube. So on my YouTube channel, um, you'll actually be able to watch how I made the clay. Because in the, in the live tomorrow, I'm going to talk about it and the basics of it. But obviously, I actually have a whole YouTube showing you how to make it. And it's just a new pace. I'm really super excited about it. And uh, it's, it works really, really well. I have um, never really worked much with wafer paper as far as like with Flower Pro. But um, it um, is just a way of being able to enable you to make components of the Flower Pro range, like the poppy seed head, the poppy bud, and things like that that are going to uh, um, be able to use the mold. So you could make, for example, like the sunflower center with the new clay, then you could use the um, the, clay, the uh, wafer paper, as I'm going to show you tomorrow, and you can make your sunflower petals with wafer paper. So it's just, it's just giving you another medium to play around with, okay? And uh, so somebody just ordered a, a dryer from eBay. That's good. And you know, that's the thing. And plus also like pasta machines and also um, on like eBay, um, eBay have new and used. Um, you often are going to find, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, well, I'll get a dehydrator. I'm going to make jerky or I'm going to make dried fruits or dried vegetables and things like that, herbs and that. And then, you know, it takes up space in your cabinet. You put it in the garage and then you decide to get rid of it. Um, pasta machines, the same. A lot of people go into a store and think, oh, well, I'll have a go at making pasta. And then they do it a couple of times and then they give up. So um, the thing is, is you can, um, you can sometimes pick them up used as well. All right. And uh, yeah, the YouTube isn't, won't be, um, that isn't loaded. Scott is actually just finishing editing that. So that will be on there tomorrow, okay? So we're actually going to launch that at 3 p.m. tomorrow, so 8 p.m. UK time. The recipe will, for the clay uh, will be posted tomorrow at 3 p.m. on the uh, recipes and templates, and then the YouTube will go live at 3 as well. So you can just watch the, you can just watch the live, and then you can download those things and watch the, the, the video on that. So how are we doing, those of you working, how are we doing with the buds, all right? Are we doing okay with the bud? Just see how everybody's doing. So, uh, but as I said, you know, hopefully even those of you not working, this is not too boring because obviously I'm talking about other things as well. And if you have any questions, you know, just obviously post them up. So Carol's finished, so she gets two green stars. Okay, so good job, Carol. Um, so so that, that's going to be a little bud, all right? And um, so then what we're going to do is uh, going to 
then make your leaves. Now, when you do this, if you're doing this at home tomorrow or on Wednesday, I would recommend you know, do it in the order I'm showing you. So we're doing the, um, this first, all right? And um, because this is going to um, be really almost giving your center a little time to dry. So for the rose leaves, all right, so for the rose leaves, we're gonna take 30 grams of sugar, 10 grams of air drying clay, and then that would be a number 15 small ball. I've given you the sizes as well, because if you don't have a digital scale, um, you know what size ball. Roll out two thirds through the pasta machine on setting number three, on air drying clay number two. All right, so you're gonna take about two thirds of that, approximately, okay? I'm just gonna roll this out. But as I said, pasta machine, so you know, in a couple of weeks time when I'm, when I'm talking about equipment, again, I will be uh, talking about the uh, pasta machine. You know, obviously I have the KitchenAid one, but those of you who live in the UK, you know, Kenwood have one, and there's also like a hand crank one. If you can buy literally for about, you know, 20 pounds, you know, $20, you can buy uh, pasta machines. But I've also had students that have found them used as well. And, um, but as I said, the pasta machine, of course, regulates this. But if you, if you don't have the pasta machine, just roll out two thirds of your paste, all right? So it just wants to be big enough to cut out because we're gonna use, this is the extra large cutter. So this is the biggest size in the set, all right? But I'm just gonna go through here on number two on my pasta machine. What it does, it really just helps to um, even out your paste. You know, as I, as I explained in my uh, using air drying clay, you know, the other thing is with the using the pasta machine, what it means is that when you're using uh, veiners and things, you get a consistent uh, vein in because if your paste is thick at one side and thin on the other side, like this side was, you know, say four or five millimeters, this side is two or three millimeters. When you press it on the veiner, it's not gonna give you equal amounts here. Now, if any of you haven't watched the first lesson, because obviously we have some brand new members, I mean, we've had obviously members join in today um, and uh, just a brand new into the group, so welcome. But as I said, you can watch the episodes, you know, remember on the portal, that's where you're gonna find all of that, um, all of those sort of, ep you know, previous episodes, the master classes and things, your downloadable materials. So, you know, each time before, usually two or three days before, a, um, the uh, regular episodes, Christine, who takes care of that, will load those onto, um, and obviously usually post it on Facebook. So we're trying to give you, uh, um, obviously, uh, an update of, you know, when things are on there, and then usually the videos go live. You know, if it's like next Monday is a pre-recorded video I've done on the hibiscus, so that will go live at 7 p.m. or um, obviously 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, so you roll out, so we're gonna cut out three leaves. So we're just gonna do three of the leaves here. Um, and um, those are going to be done, uh, the leaves are going to be done with, um, so 26 gauge green wire, dip into egg white or glue and insert about halfway into the leaf, all right? So this is where I use the little, um, as I said, um, the little uh, needle tip applicator, I like this. So what you want to do is just press so you know the glue is, is uh, coming out the end here, there we go. And then I just um, literally can just put the wire in and just put a little bit of glue onto there. All right, I'm going to take my leaf here all right, and you can use just a little bit of, um, you know, and I did show this on the lesson we did with that, but you can take your, you can thread this in, all right, so you're basically just gonna thread it into the thickness of the paste. Remember, the air drying clay is a little bit thicker because it will shrink a little bit. Just pinch around the bottom, like that. All right, so your wire is in your leaf. Then we're gonna take your vena. As I said, I'm just coming a little bit, because I've got obviously people's questions and stuff. Oh, that's wonderful. Elfin, you got a, um, got a pasta machine for Mother's Day, lovely. So a little bit of vegetable shortening or coconut oil or fat onto the right hand side, just minimal amount, all right? And um, then you're gonna place the leaf onto there. So you want the wire in the little channel and you're gonna bring this over, all right? And just gonna press this onto the top. Remember with the air drying clay, you need very, very little pressure there, okay? And of course, it's gonna give you the beautiful veining onto the leaves there. But I said, you know, if you haven't worked with the edge, it just has such a nice uh, consistency to work with. And then again, you're just gonna just work your edges of your leaf. So just gonna work your edge of your leaf a little bit like this. So just gonna work. And you see that way, it doesn't really distort your vein in on there, okay? And then you're going to then take your, gonna take this and you're gonna just hollow the base of your, around your companion tool. You can pinch it like a slight, there, and then you can take some. Now, questions we had about 
foam, all right? This is what we call crepe foam or convoluted foam because it has a concave and convex. So convoluted, which is a bit of a mouthful, or a crepe foam. And I think Margaret Ellis in the UK said that somebody called it like bubble foam, all right? Now, you can buy this like in, like we sell this basically single pieces or double two of these. Um, and, but also what some people do is if you go to a lot of like home stores, they have mattresses like for camping or mattresses like for a single bed or a twin bed. And uh, so you can actually just buy like a twin bed mattress or a single bed mattress and just cut it up. And uh, that will give you lots of, uh, as I said, foam pieces, all right? And it comes in different colors as well. This is a charcoal color. But you're just going to put in your leaf. Now, other alternative would be like uh, using the foil sheet. So when I showed the aluminum foil sheet, the softer foil, um, when I, we did the, uh, we're talking about um, some other things, you know, you're going to use that. When I do the hibiscus, I'll talk about the sheets of foil. And those are food service sheets. You buy a lot of times in a dollar store or a pound store. Um, they're not on a roll. They're like individual sheets. It's a little bit of a softer. So an alternative method is you could just scrunch up some foil and you could just lay the leaves to dry on the foil. All right, now the other way you can do the, the other way you can put the wire in, all right, so again, just moving this out so that I can, and um, so like Brian, who's one of our uh, students, so um, it's obviously at the moment off of work, he works at the Contemporary Resort Hotel at Disney, where I know a lot of the chefs there, and uh, also uh, um, Donald, uh, who is also a member, is also works at the Contemporary. So I have two of the chefs from uh, from Disney World um, in our club, and um, so. But uh, Brian has been making a lot of um, leaves and things, and always had trouble getting the wire in. So the other way you can do that is you can put it onto the back of the vena, and you see how you just almost feel it tickle your finger. All right. Now another. So that's one way, and then another way you can do that is you can do it like on a pad as well. But when you put the wire in. You almost want to feel it tickle your finger as it goes in, and then you'll know that it's in the right place, you see? So that's another way. So if you're having you know, a little challenge just holding it, but you basically hold it quite firmly between your thumb and first finger so it's forced into the middle. Just going to pinch around the bottom, okay? And then we're going to then again. Now, um, we had some questions about, um, you know, like air drying clay. Um, you know, some, there was some discussion on the group um, page. Uh, a couple of weeks ago about, you know, should you have two sets of silicone veiners? Um, you know, when we work on like Create and Craft TV and that, just generally because of potential liability and things, they always recommend a customer would have two sets. Most people just have one. Um, because the air drying clay, the hardy clay, there's nothing in it. It's non-toxic. This is used in schools, so kindergarten, nursery schools use this. You know how many kids are going to eat that. So it's not harmful in any way. I mean, it's not an edible product, but it's non-toxic. There's nothing in it that's going to harm you, okay? Um, but, um, so, but some of the, um, some of the, not necessarily polymer clays, but the thing is some of the getting towards the cold porcelain, like I have a student who makes her own cold porcelain and it has sodium benzoate, which is a very, something you have to be really careful with your skin, and also has formaldehyde, which is used to embalm bodies, all right? And so that's something that you have to, when you make it, you have to make it with the windows open and a well-ventilated room. Um, and so the thing is, you really wouldn't want that permeating into something you're gonna then use the next time for food. But the edge, the um, hardy clay, all right, I have, you know, as I said, no, issues with you using these for hardy clay and for sugar, but just, just wash them between, all right? Um, and as I said, you can put them in a dishwasher, but also remember when you're ever using a little bit of shortening or fat on the mold, you always want to make sure that you wash it. Um, obviously, just use a little bit of dish soap or washing up liquid and a little nail brush. And again, this is perfect for the food dehydrator. When you see my video on equipment, I, when I've washed my molds, I just put them in the food dehydrator. When I wash my brushes, when I've dusted flowers, put them in the food dehydrator. So it's just an excellent way to, um, you know, when you wash your cutters and things. So anything like that, you can put in the food dehydrator. So anyway, so we're just going to bring this over. Just going to press just gently on the side here. Just going to peel this off. All right. And then you can also do this on your finger. So you can actually just use your finger here. So you can actually just work, because you don't have to do this all the way around. It's just basically just sort of here and there on the rose leaf. All right, and then we're going to then just hollow the base of this. And actually the air drying clay, you know, unlike the sugar, you literally could basically just stand those up into a, you know, styrofoam block and things or a styrene block, a cake dummy um, ready for that. Okay. 
and then we're going to take your third one. And I will talk about this. Um, you know, there's on the list of basic equipment magnet. You know, when I teach, um, some of you have seen me talk about this in some of my lives, but this is like a workstation, and I talk about making this when we're together in our talking about tools. But uh, this is just a ma self adhesive magnet, so it's got like a sticky back onto it. So I use this, and then I've got cake pop or just like cocktail straws. So this is really useful when you're working with thin wires. If you watch my Wisteria uh, Cake Live uh, video, the Cake Live Live, um, I use this, talked about this, and then this is good to put longer wires in. But the the uh, magnet is a great way just to keep your wires on on the table so they don't get all over the place. So when you cut them, you can have them ready. Um, and then just going to put the, there we go, the last one. Just remember, obviously, clean this up. And if you are using like a little needle tip applicator, if you find the glue is not coming out, just take the top off and then use a pin or something under some hot water. It's just probably got a little blockage of the glue in the top here. But as I said, the way I normally do is just sort of hold and I can sort of feel the wire going between my fingers, all right, and just mold around the bottom. And just remember, you know, those of you who haven't watched the air drying clay uh, videos, and when we do air drying clay, we always go one thicker than you would with, um, with sugar, all right? Because it shrinks a little bit. Um, and uh, the other, the, the, when you use the size guide, it's exactly the same, all right? So you'll see in your direction. So ADC stands for air drying clay, all right? Um, and uh, so again, just going to take this off just carefully, but a little bit of vegetable shortening just helps with the release from that. Then I would just use a little bit of dish soap, washing up liquid, just scrub it, rinse it, pop it in my food dehydrator, and it's going to be perfect, okay? I posed this question, can we use hardy clay flowers on real cakes? All right, yeah, I saw your, I'm sorry, just I've had a little bit of a crazy day today. So a couple of you had posted questions about, about things. There is no problem whatsoever with using hardy clay on a real cake, all right? Um, in, you know, like competitions and that, so Julie um, had a, we had Julie Askew and I had a conversation about that. Um, you know, like in a competition, you wouldn't use air drying clay, but for a customer, the nice thing about that, like if you were to put this rose on a cake, it's beautiful because somebody can take it off and keep it, all right? And when we talked about the wiring of flowers, it's sort of really a big, a big benefit with uh, being able to do that. Um, as far as like when you put it onto a cake, generally when you're using like a, a poly dowel, like a poly dowel type of thing, and it goes into your cake, the thing is, it's not you, you sort of really sit in directly. And even if you laid this on top of a cake, like if, for example, because this is all dry, if I laid it on top of the cake, there's just a couple of like little sort of points of contact area there. So really there's nothing. But if you were concerned, what you would do is you'd put this into a poly dowel so it was more like standing up or you could actually have it sort of cascading off the side of the cake. But as I said, there is really nothing, because this is no different, um, it's all sealed. It's no different than obviously using um, this one I actually did with, uh, you can use the spray lacquer, which is the same we'd use on a sugar leaf. So it's basically sealed, all right? Um, but as I said, you know, I personally, as I said, have no, with the hardy clay, with the air drying clay. Now, as I said, cold porcelain is a little different because as Julie, uh, Julie um, Askew was, uh, use some cold porcelain a few years ago, when you put cold porcelain onto sugar, it can melt the cold porcelain, all right, because uh, it has a bit of a reaction. The air drying clay doesn't, all right, and I do a lot of my, a lot of my uh, sample flowers I do when I travel um, for cake shows and things, I make them all in the air drying clay because, you know, as I said, this is very durable, you know, it's not going to get broken. Um, whereas a sugar one is more difficult to travel with, all right? And plus at competitions, like if you have a, a bakery or a wedding business and you go to a bridal show, you know, people are poking things all the time. Oh, is that sugar? You know, and then suddenly you've got broken petals. The nice thing about this, it looks exactly the same as sugar, like I showed you on the sweet pea, but as I said, it stays flexible. Um, so, but it really, as it comes down to personally what you, um, you, want to do, but as I said, I would say that there is no problem in using hardy clay on a cake, on a real cake, um, as I said, because it is a keepsake. But as I said, some of the other polymer clays, and of course, like when you start getting um, some of our design team, like Karen and Jack um, and Noreen and that, they do a lot of uh, craft-related things. They're using sometimes gilding wax or other different things that I wouldn't want to put that onto a cake, all right? So it depends a little bit, but if you're finishing this flower off, which we will be, more like how you finish a sugar flower, then as I said, there's really no difference, all right? It's just your paste is more of a, a flexible paste, all right? And then of course also Arati, 
um, our design, uh, one of our um, ambassadors from India, so Arati's paste, which is the sugar in paste, you know, that's starch based as well. So that stays flexible also. And uh, Arati is going to be doing a, uh, she's also going to be doing, you know, most of the design team over the next few months are going to be doing a little segment. So as I said, you had Veronica and next week Chrissy Boone will be doing hers. And uh, so you'll be, um, as I said, uh, seeing obviously different people working with different mediums, all right? So um, anyway, so those are, your, um, those are your leaves, all right? So, but as I said, with the air drying clay, literally you can just stand these up, all right? Because they, but the sugar ones, just leave those to dry in, in there like so, all right? So here's your, your leaves here. Now, so when you do this, if you haven't done it yet, all right? Obviously we have some people working on their leaves, all right? So I'm just gonna explain about the next step. So the thing is, is once you've, um, so it's important that you make your flower center and you also make your bud because those are both done in the darker color, all right? And remember the color you make your rose can be any color you want. It could be pink, it could be peach, it could be burgundy or whatever, you know, whatever color you want to, especially with air drying clay to match into your home color. And then um, what you're gonna do then is um, you're going to then, we're gonna do the secondary stage of the rose, the outer petals, so we're gonna take 40 grams of gum paste or 12 grams of air drying clay. So that is the, this is the 12 gram amount, all right? So that is a number, um, that is gonna be a number 15 size of paste. And you're gonna add a number 10 ball of your base color. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a number 10 size ball here, which if you've done this correctly, all right? I do say if you've done it correctly, <laughs> all right? But if you've done this correctly, so you take a num about a number 10 size ball of the paste, all right? Now, um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this to the 40 grams, oh, sorry, to the uh, 15 grams, uh, 12 grams of the air drying clay, you see? So what this is gonna do, this is gonna make a very pale version of this, all right? And um, so the thing is, you see, this makes a really pale blush color. Now, if you, if it, when you put it up against it, of course, it's going to be quite a contrast, but the dust, when we dust this, is going to come together. But as I said, if you, if you, you know, this is what I've got left, or it's very little I've got left, but if you um, don't have 10, number 10, you've only got like a number eight or a number nine, you can still do that. And if necessary, if you've used gel colors or paste colors and you want this to be a little tiny bit darker, so just, you know, because what we have here, you see how you have this, um, this very, very pale version, but you see when, this is the same color I used here, all right, but you see when you when you put the when you put the dust on here, it's going to blend everything together. Okay, so that's going to that would be your outer outer stage. Okay, and the thing is, you know, with the sugar one, so like if you wanted to do this tonight in sugar, you could do this part, just hang it upside down, and then tomorrow you can do your outside petals. All right, or as I said, you can do it tomorrow morning, and then obviously later on in the day. So what we're going to do now is. Um, so we're going to roll it into a sausage and cut it into three sections. So we're going to roll this into a sausage. See, this is the way I teach. You know, I'm very sort of organized in my teaching and trying to make it as easy as possible for the students. And, um, but so this is the way that when I teach, you know, so it means that you're having, you have exactly the right amount um, that you need. Okay, so then we're going to put this, and then this is going to, all right, so we're going to, so we're gonna now cut out a 90 millimeter blossom cutter. This is the, gonna be the medium size cutter here. All right, so this is gonna be the medium cutter. Now remember I said you can use your pasta machine so you can use the same technique as that or you can use your plastic folder. Just get in my, uh, sorry, just get in my folder, there we go. All right, so you can just roll this out just a little bit. As I said, we do, we do have the, um, we will have some of these in the UK soon. It's just, as I said, the company that uh, we get these from, but we do have these in Atlanta. So those of you in the US, and I realize, you know, also some of you have, um, some of you from the UK have looked into, unfortunately, you know, shipping or postage is very expensive, all right? But when things do get back to normal, um, if there's anything that we carry here that we, we don't have in the UK, and you have any like neighbors or family or friends coming over to the US on holiday, um, we do that a lot. We'll send um, stuff down to my, say to Florida, to Orlando or to Miami, 
uh, to a neighbor to bring it back for you, all right? And so, so that, that is uh, good. And then also, you know, I will be coming over to Cake International as well. So uh, we are working on some um, said products over the next few weeks. So we should hopefully have a lot of new little tools and gadgets and stuff. But uh, again, you know, like I've brought over things sometimes for members or uh, people that were in our regular Flower Pro group. So I will, um, you know, be coming over to the NEC in November. So the thing is, is that uh, if there's anything you specifically need, um, you know, I'll talk about that in the club page and then you can order it and then I will bring it over for you. Again, you can just collect it from the NEC. Um, and uh, but as I said, you know, like uh, obviously most of the things we hopefully will have, you know, we're working with some companies in the UK to develop some of the things that I have. And we're also making it even more fun because we're going to be doing them in the NL branded green and stuff like that. So we have some super things coming out. All right. So, anyway, so you're going to just sort of roll this out. All right. So we're just going to roll this this one out. So this is going to be the this will be the 90 millimeter one. All right. So we're just going to cut this out. So just going to cut this. And uh, then once we've cut this out, so we're going to, so we're going to um, place in plastic folder or flap and then thin the edge a little, okay? So what we're going to now do is we're going to place this into the plastic flap. And remember, you can with your air drying clay, all right, you can just put a little touch of corn flour onto this if you need to, all right? And we're going to just thin out the edge of this. Now, when you thin the edge of this, all right, you're going to do, um, you're going to thin the edge. Like when I show things like cowlies now, I usually use my finger, but something you can also use, this is where you could use your ball in tool as well. Now, remember, I showed this um, uh, last week. You know, this is a jumbo ball tool. Again, we're waiting for more stock of this to come in. It's the Tico product, but it is something you can also find online. But I also showed, you know, you could take a, this is a two and a half centimeter um, ball. This is a marble. I just hot glued onto a uh, wooden dowel. Um, this is a two and a half uh, centimeter, one inch styrene ball. Okay. I've just uh, made a hole in it and then put some hot glue on there. You could also use a number 12 ball of air drying clay and just glue a number 12 ball of air drying clay on the end of it. And you'll have a little ball into it. And you see, so here we're going to just use, so basically, you're going to just use this balling tool because the outside petals of the rose are very thin, you see? So you're just going to use your, so we're just going to thin these out. All right, so, but as I said, so the, and the marble works really well for that as well. We're going to be using this for cupping also, okay? Now we're going to use the um, double-sided veiner. If you don't have this, all right, you don't have to, but as I said, it just, on the outer petals here, we're going to, so it's got a little bit of a, it's a bit humid in here, it's a bit sticky, there we go. All right, so you can see here, like on the edge here, it just tore a little bit, you know, don't, as I said, worry too much about that because we can just basically press it back down and then you can just, it just sometimes it gets a little sticky there and you can just thin that out just a little bit more, okay? And then usually you're just going to just start to peel this off of the plastic here. Okay, and then you can take your, if you need to use your scissors here, just a little bit on the edge you can do. Now you don't want to thin them out too much, but what we're doing here, we're just thinning the edges out just a little bit, all right? And then again, you can, um, if you're having issues with your paste sticking, all right, with the air dryer, you can just put a little tiny, tiny bit of vegetable shortening onto there if you need to. All right, and you're going to place this on, onto here. All right, and then you're going to take the top, top onto there like that. With the air drying clay, you can just press on with your finger. You know, this is just um, an acrylic disc. And again, we are having some of these made, obviously, through KD Sue, but you can use a cake board as well. So basically just something to press on the top of that. That just helps to um, obviously get the vein in onto here. And you can just sort of peel this off. But it's almost as well, if you, if you have just like a little bit of fraying on the edge of the petals, don't really worry too much. Now, also remember with the air drying clay, with the air drying clay, it will typically fuse. You know, when I showed the, in lesson one, I showed the rose there. So just going to just make a little cut between the, petals here. All right, so you see how the petals are separated there. 
And then uh, once we've done that, we're going to remove and soften very slightly using this, the shaft of the tool. All right, so we're going. Now we don't really want to make this too frilly, okay? Because these pedals, we're just going to just soften just very lightly, so just a little tiny bit. You can do this on. So remember, you can do this onto here, or if you have the green silicon one. But so all of these work great, you know. So. Going to just soften this very, very slightly. All right, so just a little time because we don't want to make this too frilly. Now, then what we're going to do is going to turn this over, and you can use a piece of foam or the back of your convoluted foam or your crepe foam, like this. All right, so that means you see the side that we softened. All right, naturally, you're going to lose that vein in a little bit. It's got a little bit of green in here. so. But just going to use your your little scissors. But it's also like on some roses, um, like for example, when I teach the avalanche rose, which is made with individual petals, we actually on the outside petals you use a pair of scissors or a little cutting wheel. You may purposely make little slashes because on an actual real rose they have that like almost torn edges on the petals. So you're going to then turn over onto thick foam or back of crepe foam and cut with large ball into a rounded end of rolling pin or a styrene ball or marble. Okay, so so what you're going to do here, you see, you're going to take your, going to take this. Now here, you're using a rolling technique. All right, so you're actually going to let the let the paste, uh, let the. So you see how you're rolling it. So you're rolling it. So you're actually cupping each of the petals like that. You see, so the petals will cup up. And as I said, you know, so all of these work equally as well. You see, so as I said, just a little styrofoam ball, but. Um, and when you make the, if you look back on the group page, when you make the foam one, you see like a number, tw the, like a number, the, this is a two and a half centimeter styrene ball, okay? So you see it's a, like a small number 12. But when you're doing this with air drying clay, because it's going to shrink about 8 to 10 percent, make it just a regular number 12 size, one third below, two thirds above. Just glue it onto a stick and you'll have a permanent balling tool, all right? So it's a super easy way to make balling tools. You can make different size ones as well. All right, so it's a fun, fun way to do, to do that. And then we're going to just um, build the rose. So you can just take this, just place this onto your. I'm just going to use my mat here. Now we're going to do this like we do the roses, but we're just going to do like hang it upside down, and so you don't have to use the numbers on here, okay? But you're going to. Um, then we're going to brush egg white in a star shape, a place on the flower pearl ultimate petal vena, and push wire through the center. So when you're doing. Um, when you're doing a um, uh, basically a sugar one, you brush your egg white like in a starfish shape, all right, about a third of the way down your petals, all right. The sugar one we don't usually need anything, but if you feel like you you've used a lot of cornstarch on there, and you want to just put a little tiny bit of glue on there. You can just do a little tiny bit of glue. But remember, the nice thing about the air drying clay, it sticks to itself. Just make sure that's in the middle here. All right. So then what we're going to do is, um, so we're going to position pedals on an overlap. Now that means that the pedal is going to sit like this. So you see how the pedal is going in between. All right, so it's going on an overlap, okay? And remember the first four pedals all go up straight. So this is going to go on an overlap. Now you turn this upside down. You're going to take off your, going to take off your um, former here. And then you're going to position the pedals on an overlap, flip upside down, and create a spiral with the right hand side of each pedal sticking out. All right? Now, as you're looking to it in camera, so what we want is you want the right hand side of each of the pedals sticking out. So you see how the right hand side, as you're looking at it here, you see this is the right hand side, the right hand side, the right hand side, the right hand side. And then you're going to just gonna squash these on where the ribs are. You see where you've got those like the five ribs, you just pinch there. Where your five ribs are there, like so. So you see how that is going to give you your. Uh, we're starting on now your outside petals, okay? All right. But as I said, they want to have this sort of overlap on them. But literally, you just pinch where the where the ribs are, like that, like that, and that will give you your next petal, okay? Now again, on the air drying clay, usually it's going to be fine. On the sugar one, you just would hang that upside down. All right. And then I'm just going to show you the, the next pedal, all right, and then just sort of how to, how to finish that off. And then you're going to repeat with another pedal. Um, so then you're going to repeat with another pedal. Um, this is going to be made a little bit longer. So you'd actually make this a little bit thicker, okay? 
So if you read the instructions on that next page, you'd roll it number five or number four for air drying clay. Because this one we're going to use the same cutter, and then but we're going to make it just a little bit, um, as I said, just a little bit uh, longer. But see, just on the silicone works works well. So here, this is just going to be a little tiny bit thicker. So I'm just going to roll this out so it's just about the size. You see? So just roll it so it's just about the size of that. So this is actually going to be a little bit. You can see this paste is thicker than we had before. Okay. And then we're going to then. Can I just take this off? All right. So we're going to again. You can just make this a little bit longer so you can roll with your your tool here. Just going to just make that just a little bit longer here. Just just a little bit longer because we we're using um, as I said the three cutters. And so this one will just be a little bit longer. Just going to make this a little bit longer. But if you do have a sort of a stick like this, um, you can use this. And also like for example with the air drying clay, even with your you can use like your rolling pin like this as well. Remember this is just the PVC pipe that I use for the air drying clay. You see, so it just makes it a little bit. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take this. And you just continue in the same way as you did before. Now remember the other the other way you can do this um, if you don't want to put it in the flap, you know you can also just do like I showed you, where you take the you're just going to thin this around the edge. So just using your ball tool, you're just going to thin around your edge here. But this little um, silicone mat I found work really, really well because it's just sort of the the right size, you know. Because mostly when I teach, I mostly teach the uh, when I'm teaching air drying clay, I use this size rose, which is the one I showed in lesson number one. So it makes it really, really easy to for the students to because that's basically the size we need the the cutter to be. See, so you just make that pedal a little, little thinner. Now, also um, talking about the air drying clay, you know, um, you'll also notice that Katie Sue sell Medina. If you looked on there, it's uh, Medina is on the regular Katie Sue website. Medina is another Japanese, and it's a uh, it's a different sort of animal. It has it's more dense, so a lot of people use Medina. They have different brands of it, just like hardy clay for like jewelry and things. It's a bit more like a, towards a polymer clay consistency. So some um, of our team members, uh, Margaret Ellis and uh, as um, a Shaley and uh, Kerry, some of them use a combination of hardy clay and Modena clay, and it's sort of like it's sort of. Uh, I think Kerry uses two parts hardy clay, one part Modena, and what that does is it's going to give you just a slightly denser clay. Um, it, you know, it does take a little bit of getting used to the. It's it's a little bit like working with it because it's very lightweight, but um, once you get used to it, as I said, just does take a little time to get used to it. But once you do get used to it, it's very very easy to. Um, to work with the product, but um, as I said, you know Kerry's got quite hot hands, and so when he was on Create and Craft a couple of weeks ago, uh, when we launched the uh, foliage mold, um, he was using, as I said, a combination of hardy clay and uh, um, the uh, Medina. Okay, and then uh, the other thing is, is that you know, like Kerry, if you watch Kerry's, you know, he uses a watered down PVA glue, so he uses like two parts glue, one part water, so that makes it a little bit runnier. So you know, it's like all of these things. It's like tweaking a recipe, a cake recipe, or whatever, and making it your own. It's what it ultimately, at the end of the day, is what works well for you. Okay, but as I said, during the you know coming, but just remember, you don't need to soften too much here because these petals are going to be. These petals will be the um, obviously these are going to be slightly longer, so that's why we made this this next layer a little bit. So if you think about it, you know we started off with a two inch five centimeter cutter, and then we made the next one a little tiny bit longer. Then we went on to a seven centimeter, and then it's going to be um, obviously will be a, then the, that one, and then a little bit longer. And then obviously we've gone a regular nine centimeter, then a slightly longer nine centimeter, and then we're going to finish off with the eleven centimeter, one hundred and ten millimeter. So really, what we've done is each layer is progressively got bigger and bigger. Okay. So again, you soften. We're going to turn this over, 
and I'm going to take this now onto the back of said the convoluted foam you can use. Um, you know, we had a, a student asking about one of our members asking about sponge. You know, if you go to again, I know a lot of the chemists and drug stores and things are closed, but you know, a lot of the big box stores like in the UK, Asda's and places like that here, you Walmart. You can buy like baby bath sponge. You can get like a round baby bath sponge that's soft as well. So that's also good to use for for that. Um, but as I said, you can see how I'm just cupping, you know, with my marble. But this is a very, very easy way to make a ball in tool, see? So just gonna just cup like this. When I do some of my other um, projects, you know, I sometimes use spoons. When I make roses with individual petals, I actually dry the petals for a couple of minutes in a teaspoon, and that's how we get that sort of nice shape to them. But this gives you the same, the same sort of effect, okay? Um, and then, um, so then we're going to repeat, as, and then you're going to alternate this petal, all right? So this petal is now going to alternate. So remember, this is just the way, really, all I'm doing here is I'm just using this as a way of holding the rose because it's easier than trying to hold it up in your fingers. So again, with the sugar one, you're gonna put the glue on the, and then here, all right, we're coming up like this. So now we're gonna go in between, you see? So these petals are gonna go in between these petals. See, so, and then again, you're just gonna take this, all right, and you're just gonna make sure that the, the right-hand side of the petal you see, so as, as I'm looking at here, it's the right-hand side, as you're looking with my finger here, the right-hand side of the pedal. So you see how you're gonna get your pedals in that spiral. And then you're just going to just pinch here where the fin is, like where that's almost like the spine is of those five fins, you see? Because in the air drying clay, that's gonna now stick this together. But you see how now, you see how that's giving you that shape that classic sort of shape. And you can just use your fingers like this with sugar or air drying clay because they want to sort of in curve, all right? So you're just gonna just have that, that sort of shape on your rose here like this, okay? And then I'm just gonna show you the last part and then that will be lesson over with today. And, um, and then as I said on Thursday, I'm going to show you how to do the calyx. All right now, when you get to the last part, so you're going to the last layer will be created the 110 millimeter, and then what you can actually do is just take the last piece of paste and then what you've got left, all right? So you can just take the last piece of paste and then what you've got left from the 290 millimeters. So you see, what I've done is I've, sca I've done this all out. So basically, that's all I have left from my paste project, all right? And plus I'll have a little bit of this lighter color. So as I said, I tried to put all the rather than uh, giving you a guide of how much color. And when we do the sweet pea, it will be the same. It obviously will tell you, you know, how much paste we're using and things like that um, for the sweet pea project. So again, you can just use a little bit. But see, the air drying clay, because it's very, very lightweight, you can use, you can, um, now when we're using, when we're doing the larger size cutter, that's a little bit bigger than that. It's about the size of the mat, all right? So you can roll it out on the silicone mat. Remember, you can also just roll out on a normal surface as well. It's just if you're using the pasta machine, you need to make sure that you, if you're using the pasta machine, you do uh, put it in the plastic, okay? Because it will be it's gummy, it will stick to the rollers there. All right, so we're gonna roll this out. And just remember with sugar ones, you know, we put the cutter on top and we wiggle. With the air drying clay, you're just gonna just press on the top. You see, so we have your, so you see that's basically what's gonna be left from my project, you see? And sugar one will be the same, you know, it just, it just enables you to get your right amount of product. Remember, all of these outside ones, we wanna thin a little bit, okay? So remember, just going, when you thin this, you're going to just take your, remember your balling tool here, just gonna work your edge just a little bit. This just thins this out. So if you haven't made a ball in tool, as I said, if you've got some air drying clay, just make it from air drying clay um, or a marble or as I said, two and a half inch styrene ball. But this is really, it's a good, good size ball in tool for you know, certain flowers when we need to be able to cup them and stuff. And just remember, just, you know, if your petals fuse together, you're going to just um, unfuse them, okay? We're gonna pop this back onto here. And 
And remember, you um, you know, if you're wanting to enter the competition, we are having a drawing for three um, any KD Sue molds you'd like. You know, that could be Flower Pro or KD Sue molds or whatever um, for the citrus. So we've had a couple of entries already. So remember that will um, close on Thursday, and then we'll be announcing the winner next week. But um, we've had some some really nice uh, projects. So we're going to vein this in the same way. The other thing with the air drying clay, you will find that the um, air drying clay does take the veining very, very well. Um, generally speaking, sort of it's going to make the veining uh, more noticeable because it is a softer medium than the gum paste or sugar paste, you know, the paste we put, flour paste we put into there. So you do get really beautiful veining um, onto there. And again, on the back of this, so we're just gonna put this onto the back. And we're just going to just soften this just very, very slightly. Okay. Now Thursday's lesson won't be such a long lesson. It's just because obviously um, I needed to have all of this stuff ready for the next step. You know, Thursday, we could have actually made these petals on Thursday because, but if you're doing them sugar, you need for it to be totally dry before you put the calyx on, all right? So it is a little bit of a longer, longer lesson tonight, but as I said uh, today, so you're going to put this onto your foam and then again you're going to just take your you know your marble or your as i said you know the styrofoam one the foam one works very well as well you see just a very very easy way to make a large ball in tool but you could make these in different sizes if you don't have ball tools uh, hardy clay works great but the marbles also work this is just literally hot glue i just hot glued a um, dowel a wooden dowel onto the marble okay and uh so very very easy to so if your kids have marbles at home, you maybe have just the right size to make one. And then the last one is going to, Chrissy who's watching has got four, four of them. So I'm sure uh, Charlie's got some marbles you could use if you don't have one, Chrissy. <laughs> and um, so then the last one there. So just remember if, if you want the added security of making sure it's gonna stick, you know, with the air drying clay, you can put a little bit of uh, glue onto there, but as I said, it's really not necessary. You know, I didn't do that on all the layers. And this is also when you're pushing the wire through, you know, this is something that you, some of you will be tape challenged, all right? When we did the Q&A last week, we talked about that, but just sometimes, you know, the, the tape becomes unraveled. So if you just trim it with your scissors, all right, with your wire cutters, that will just ensure that it will not come unraveled and just go through the hole. You see, this is gonna go back into the position of the first one. So this is gonna go, so this third pedal will go in the same position as the first pedal, first outside pedal here, you see? All right, and I'm going to hang this upside down. And then again, you're going to just take the right hand side. So you want to make sure you get this sort of spiral. All right, the right hand side on the top first. And then again, we're just going to just press this just gently. You don't have to press this too much, the outside one, because these, these will be the outside pedals. All right, but just going to just press this on gently. All right, so you see how we've got now the layers of petals. And then what we're going to do is going to use some foam pieces. All right, so you're going to just use some foam. Now, pieces of this like foam, if you go into the supermarket in the grocery store, if you see the produce manager, they often have uh, exotic fruits like dragon fruits and certain exotic fruits sometimes come packed in foam. You could also um, just go, you know, go fabric stores, usually sell foam, but also as I said, you could just go to like the dollar store and just buy like a baby bath sponge. And then um, you could um, then of course, just uh, cut up, um, cut up a baby bath sponge and just use, just use those pieces there. But so you just cut these up into smallish pieces. And usually when I put foam in, I like to use bead-in tweezers. So bead-in tweezers are silicone tip tweezers. And what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna pop, pop the bead-in tweezers, just gonna pop the foam piece under the right-hand side of the pedal. If you've watched my Flower Pro um, Peony video, it's very much like when we do the Peony. All right, so just gonna just, um, as I said, just pop those underneath the, the outside petals like that. And with your sugar one would be done the same, you see? So you're putting those underneath the right-hand side petals. And then um, 
then you're going to, and then, you know, use sugar, small pieces of foam under the right hand side. Generally speaking, you know, for, a, for an air drying clay one, it's going to be fine without the foam. But as I said, you can still put the foam pieces under there. But just that um, I like the uh, beading tweezers because they're silicone and they don't sort of, uh, regular pointed tweezers often stick into the foam. All right, so we're going to, so this will be your, this will be your uh, David Austin rose, all right? And as uh, I said, obviously, it's when it's colored, it really comes to life, all right? So when we put the color on, obviously moving this around, the foam pieces are coming off. There we go. And uh, so we're going to um, put this underneath, um, as I said, just hang this upside down. Now, with the air drying clay one, just keep an eye on it because as it shrinks, as it dries a little bit, all right, it's going to, uh, it's going to sometimes you need to reshape it or repinch it, all right? But as I said, with the sugar one, just leave this to dry, put it in your food dehydrator if you wanted to. But as I said, you've got like basically, you know, like the whole of tomorrow, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, and obviously most of Thursday. So um, you obviously could uh, do this tomorrow or on uh, Wednesday or over split it over two days, make the centers, and then you can make the outside part. And um, so, uh, so that would be how you would uh, do your roses. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have um, any questions about anything? You know, you can watch this. Obviously, when you watch it, you can obviously fast forward between, between steps and things. So does anybody have any questions just before I finish off? And um, so, well, thanks, Madeline. Well, uh, as I said, I hope uh, everybody has in enjoyed that. I'm just going to, sorry, I'm just going to press this little button. Um, get Scott here. There we go. I've got a little button I press and he, it's not working though. Okay. <laughs> so let me just, there, there we are. I have to do it myself. Sorry. Scott's actually, I think the postman just arrived, the mailman. Okay, there we go. So, okay, everybody. Well, so thank you, everybody. Um, I hope everybody um, had a fun time in the class and uh, as a little play date. And uh, I'm okay, Scott. I've got, yeah. So uh, as I said, um, I hope um, everybody had their enjoy their play date. And as I said, I hope you've learned something. And obviously, you know, I'll be talking about different tips. Remember, if you know, obviously missed this, you can watch it again, you can watch it in parts. Uh, Thursday, you know, same time, same place, will be a shorter session, but we'll be doing the uh, calyx on the bud and the, the flower. We're going to be doing the thorns. We're going to be putting the leaves together, going through the coloring technique. So just remember, if you are um, unsure about your color, all right, about, like what dust you want to use, just take a little bit of this petal, this little paste, just sort of thin it out a little bit like this. All right, and then just let it dry. And then what you can do is get your dusting powder out on Thursday, and then you can just try a little bit of the color on the edge. Remember, if the color's too strong, you can add a little corn flour, corn starch to lighten it. And then also you may want to just mix some colors, you know, because you're going to need a little bit of color uh, to go over the top. I used, um, like a sort of a pinky, pinky blush color. So just like when I made this paste, I used some peach and some pink. I'm using a sort of pinky and peach color uh, combination. All right. So, but uh, you know, as I said, this is not you know like for a client, so it doesn't matter. The color is not exactly um, the same, but uh, as you um, want. But the thing is, just if you've got dusting powders, you might need to play around with them or just have a look. You're also going to need a very very pale green for the center. So again, if you've got sort of a limey appley green, but again, put some corn flour into that. But uh, that session is something again you're going to watch, and then of course you can finish it off um, after the session's finished, and uh, obviously post the the rose. Okay. So good night, everybody, or good afternoon. Those of you here in the US, we are obviously still only at four, four o'clock, so nearly just four o'clock. So, but uh, those of you uh, in the UK, obviously, uh, as I said, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of your evening, and um, I'll see you on um, Thursday. So sweet wishes until Thursday. Bye-bye.